Earlier this year, I took a trip to the island of Grenada, and I have to say it is an extremely special place. If you've never seen it, it looks a little something like this. I'm convinced there is some sort of magical energy there that just makes you feel happier than other places I've visited, if that makes sense. The people are really friendly and it's just an extremely beautiful destination. But for some reason, when I was researching places to visit from a landscape photography perspective, I found it a little bit more difficult to find information on the best places to go to get different shots than other places I've been to. So if you're a photographer planning on visiting Grenada soon, or even if you're just visiting as a tourist and looking for some fun activities to do, then this video is for you. So without wasting any more time, let's get into my top five beautiful places to visit on the island of Grenada. Starting off with location number five, we have Mount Kwakwa. This is a beautiful hike through the rainforest and it's a good mix of being a challenging hike, but it's not as crazy as some of the others on the island. So it's 2.7 miles out and back with an elevation gain of around 800 feet. It's actually rated as easy on all trails, but we found it to be much more in the moderate category since when we went, it was insanely muddy. So definitely check and see if it's rained recently and wear shoes that you don't mind getting super muddy if you are going and it has rained in the last couple days. But with that being said, if you're able to brave the often muddy trail, the views at the top are incredible. As you hike up, there's areas to look out over the Grand Etang Lake behind you. And once you get to the top, you have some pretty insane 360 degree mountain views. And also depending on what time of day you go, you might have some monkey spottings, which would be really cool. Unfortunately, we didn't see any because I think we went a little bit too late in the afternoon, but I've heard if you go earlier in the morning, then there's a high chance of seeing monkeys in the rainforest, which will be pretty cool. So keep that in mind. Moving on to location number four, we have Grenada's Underwater Sculpture Park located in Malinir Bay. And it's essentially a collection of underwater art installations that was originally created by British sculptor Jason Taylor in 2006 and has since been actually listed as one of the top 25 wonders of the world by National Geographic. Apart from its visually striking appeal, it was also designed for practical purposes in the aftermath of Hurricane Ivan to help attract divers away from the fragile coral reefs that were damaged and also provide a habitat for local marine life. So apart from it being a really cool art installation, it has practical purposes as well. Since its creation, the area has a variety of underwater works now from a few different artists, I think, but the most famous one is called, and I'm definitely gonna say this wrong, I think, but I'll try, Vicissitudes. It's essentially this ring of life-size statues of children holding hands in a circle under the water. It's pretty eerie looking, but also a fairly amazing sight to see. And you can even see this group of statues from hundreds of feet above the water. I flew my drone up looking straight down and you could see the statues from that high up, which was pretty cool. In order to go see these sculptures, the best way is to book a tour with a local company. So we went with Aquanauts Grenada and it was just the best experience ever. And I have to say, this video is not sponsored by them at all. For full disclosure, we did work with them for some Instagram content, but this video right now is in no way sponsored. They're not telling me to say anything, but I just wanted to recommend them to you because we actually did have just about a perfect experience with them on the water, going around, seeing all the statues. The staff made it really, really fun and they were knowledgeable about some of the history of 
the installations and yeah, just a really, really fun day on the water and a highlight of the trip. So if you're gonna go, I would highly recommend booking this with them. Moving on to number three on this list, we have Annandale Falls. And this is one place that did keep popping up when I was researching where to go here. And while it is a popular spot, I would say it's definitely worth visiting still. It is paid entry, but it was only a few dollars, I think. I think it was somewhere between two and five US dollars to pay in. And then once you do that, you just walk down this pathway and you're essentially at the waterfall. So very easy to get to, uh, but a very beautiful waterfall. One thing I would note is that there were tour buses that came by, so it's on a tour bus route. But the good thing is that the tour would only stay for, I don't know, 10 minutes or so. So in between the tour buses coming and going, we had the place mostly to ourselves. So if you get there and there's a ton of people, just wait a little bit, probably around 10 minutes, and they'll probably have to go back on the tour bus and keep going. So in between those windows, it's it was fairly easy to get the shots that we wanted by ourselves there. I would say you don't need a ton of time here, but it is a beautiful waterfall to visit and there's a reason it's on almost every list that you look up as a place to go in Grenada. On to my second favorite place we went. We are getting into the business end of this list now, so it's about to get really good. This spot is called Aucoin Falls. Again, I'm not sure if I'm saying that right, but it's A-U-C-O-I-N Falls. And essentially to get there, you go to Concord Falls, but instead of stopping there, there's actually a trail that you can take that goes deeper into the forest that takes you to this waterfall. The trail is really fun, but be aware that it does involve some river crossings and also it takes a little bit more experience to navigate since there's not really an official trail or anything. Like it's not on all trails or any other app, at least that I found, but essentially, you have to just follow the, the path. And as long as you keep checking that you're on something that looks like a trail, then it felt pretty self-explanatory. We made like one wrong turn, but other than that, it was fine. So it did take a little bit of time though. I think it took us about an hour to get out there. But once you made it there, it was such a cool spot. It felt really away from anyone else. And you can get some really great perspectives from both the ground and the air photography wise if you have a drone. So I really liked this spot because it felt more remote and away from a lot of people. And also some of the shots felt more unique than some of the other on the list with the tour buses like the last one where you're just kind of getting similar shots to a lot of people. So if you're up for a little bit of adventuring down an unmarked trail, I would highly recommend checking this one out. Speaking of remote places, my favorite place that we went to the whole trip was when we drove all the way across the island to one of the northernmost beaches. It's like on the northeastern side of the island called Lavera Beach. We got up really early to make it there for sunrise and we're treated to such a beautiful start to the day. I flew my drone around and it was just amazing. After sunrise, we wandered to the beach for a little bit and it was really empty. Like again, for some reason, people don't really go that far north, I guess, even though it was as beautiful, if not more beautiful than a lot of the beaches down south, in my opinion. Later on in the day, we went and hiked over to the Welcome Stone viewpoint as well to get a higher perspective of the area. So that is something I would recommend doing too if you're gonna make that drive up. Something to note about La Vera Beach also is that between March and August, each year is nesting season for the leatherback sea turtles. Unfortunately, we visited just before this happened, but if you're visiting in that window, definitely look out for that because I can only imagine that would be really cool to see the sea turtles nesting on the beach there. But even if you go outside of the sea turtle viewing window, it was completely worth it. There was a lot to do in the area between the beach and the Welcome Stone hike. There's a cool little town that you can go into midday to go to some shops to get some food or just see what's going on there. And 
Yeah, it was just my absolute favorite place we went to on the whole island because it felt like it was more locals uh, enjoying living there and it was equally as beautiful as all of the touristy areas. So it's number one on my list of places I would recommend. If you're gonna go to Grenada, put this on your list to go to. All right, we've reached the end of the list. If you are planning on visiting Grenada soon, I hope you found this video helpful. If you're not planning on visiting, I hope you still found it entertaining to see some of these beautiful places and maybe it convinced you that you should add Grenada on your list of places that you want to visit in the future. I definitely think it's worth visiting. If you are planning on visiting, I would just say, please treat these places with respect. As with any country we travel to, I think it's important to remember that at the end of the day, we are the visitors, we are the tourists. So we should do our best to treat these places and also the local people with our respect and gratitude for letting us visit such beautiful places that they call home. Anyway, that's it for this video. Make sure to leave a like if you found it useful or entertaining in any way. Hit the subscribe button and I will see you again soon for the next one.